Hi, everypony. Today I return once again to the Pink Pony and Party of One. From the get-go, this episode shows us who the focus is with the most memorable, or at least for me, bit song that Pinkie Pie does, Singing Telegram. Seeing Gummy again is interesting. I remember not remembering Gummy when I first watched this episode. At the party, her friends are having fun, but of course, there's always something that makes a scene with Pinkie Pie a scene with Pinkie Pie. For Rainbow Dash and Applejack, bobbing for apples gets weird, with a ball in the spring and Gummy, well, gumming Rainbow Dash. Rarity will do anything for the sake of being polite, even to get gummy-infested punch back in her mouth. Twilight gets crucified, and Flourish Eye cracks a wall when Pinky joins them on the dance floor. Gummy is so cute wagging his, wait a minute. Each of them had a bad experience with Pinky at the party. It's so obvious, and yet so well done it doesn't feel forced, like normally. Every pony goes home properly tuckered out, as Pinky almost begs some pony to come back. The next afternoon gives us a bunch of this afternoon, this afternoon scenes. Each pony gives Pinky a suitable excuse. Twilight needs to study, Applejack needs to pick apples, Rarity needs to wash her hair, and Rainbow Dash and Flourish I need to house it. For Bear. His cave. While he's at the beach, playing seashells and collecting volleyballs. It's so crazy, it must be true. Right, Pinky? Pinky starts distrusting her friends and follows Twilight as she sneaks around with a mysterious package from Miss Cake. The package goes from Twilight to Rarity to Flourish Eye, and the three of them seem to be playing Spy. Oh, and RARITY PICKED IT UP IN HER TAIL! I bust out laughing when I think of her using her tail for anything. Flourish Eye meeps and then flies away after bumping into Pinky Bale. Rainbow Dash walks past and somehow sees through the brilliant disguise. The following scene firmly establishes Pinky as the fastest pony in existence. Applejack's scene where she is desperately lying is funny, but it's nothing special when compared to the comedy in the rest of the episode. Apparently none of the others have any hope as far as careers and sound effects goes, though, if this scene is any indicator. Pinky needs to know what's going on and grabs Spike to question. After some way too honest answers from the baby dragon, he validates her suspicions in the hope of some tasty-looking gems. And then there comes the breakdown scene. As good a time as any to gush about Pinky's character a little bit. Validation seems extremely important to Pinky. Throughout the episode, the audience watches it descent into madness, rather than a single moment that crushes her confidence in her friends. She couldn't face what she was thinking, and although she was angry, she needed someone else to tell her what she suspected, or else it would always stay in the realm of suspicion. Once validated, she broke under the thaw of her friends abandoning her. Even in the embrace of madness, though, she needed recognition, something the spiteful personas she gave various household items provided her with. Finally, Rainbow Dash arrives to interrupt her crazy party. She watches Pinky and friends talk to each other, and angrily talking to her. Finally, she tries to talk Pinky into leaving, and Pinky shows how infectious her crazy energy is, even when it's more like the Keishin's madness wavelength rather than laughing gas. Leaving her argument with a pile of rocks alone, she drags Pinky to the Apple family barn. Inside, her friends successfully dispel the dark spirit Pinkamina by explaining that Pinky forgot about her own party. Her ability to bounce back feels right at home for Pinky because she obviously doesn't like accusing her friends, or any pony, of being a bad pony. The moral wraps up saying you should always have faith in your friends. I like this moral, and believe you should always talk to your friends about problems or suspicions you're having. You shouldn't just let bad feelings sit between you and your friends as it did for Pinky. Finally, I could do some fanboying. This episode hardly wasted a moment between character interaction and comedy, even having Twilight looking horrified as she watches Rarity drink the punch again. Four scenes rather than five was very refreshing, even though we still needed to see each of the other five interact with Pinky. Finally, seeing the crazy scene from both Pinky's perspective and how things were actually working made the scene get even creepier while being very tasteful. So, this is Lionspace saying, I hope to be invited to a Pinkie Pie party.